we're talking about the frequency of femininity, how to be the one he wants. There's so much more than that though, because this is also how to stay, stay sane and how to stay grounded and how to really love your love attraction process. Because it, I, I know like we can get frustrated, we can be, get beat down, we can be like, uh, what the F? And you know, oftentimes we can just drop out, we can you know, give up. Um, so I'm going to speak into all of that tonight. All right. So um, just as a, as, a, as a show of hands, do me a favor and let me know how, if you've ever been in that place of like wanting to quit or wanting to give up or just opt out, just throw a yes in the chat window if you've ever felt like that. Maybe you feel like that now. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Good. I've got the, yes, everybody. Awesome. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Love it. And how many times have you tried to convince yourself or maybe you felt this place of, of like, maybe I really don't need love in my life. Maybe I'm just, I'm just good by myself. And we just try to convince ourselves that everything's cool. But then we go to bed at night and we lay there just missing him, missing our person. We don't even know who he is, but we miss him, right? Yes. Too often. Yes. Been there, done that way too much. Hardly, hardly ever. Okay. That's cool. I, I hear that can go in waves. May not, may not uh, happen but for the majority of you. Yes. You missed my male energy. Got it. Awesome. Double check for me uh, in your screen. You should be able to mute your audio. Do me a favor and everybody just double check that your audio is muted. So, and just a quick question. Yeah. I've got Karina saying she's there now. Anybody else feeling that now? Anybody else feeling that you know, I sent out an email the other day where it was like flip the table, walk out of the restaurant kind of feeling. Um, you know, and I know that a lot of us are there now. Okay, got everybody muted. Great. Okay. Jessica says yes. Kit says yeah, me. Jay says yes, yes. I feel that way. Totally. I hear it. So um, I've got this cute little graphic that I pulled up because I know what this feeling feels like. I know. I know what it feels like to be missing him, to be, um, you know, just in that, in that giving up, in that hands up feeling, right? And so some of you may be resonating with the picture on the screen right now. And for those of you who are tuning in just by audio, it's a, it's a, a cute little cartoon that says, look, I found a picture of my love life. And it's this lady holding up a blank poster board <laughs> with nothing on it. Um, you know, and here's the thing, right? Love attraction is a journey. And the truth is it can be enjoyable and magical if we know the right things to do, the right mindset, the right ways of being to approach it. And I am Bex Burton, as you know, and tonight I'm going to show you how, okay? And I know I, I said it, I'll say it again, but love attraction can actually be a magical journey if we know what to do, if we know the ways of being and the mindset to really ground us and keep, it, keep us in that magic. So by the end of this training call, I'm going to show you how to love your love attraction journey and to be magnetic to the man that's right for you, not just any man, but the one that's right for you. And I'm going to do this by sharing six crucial doorways to feminine energy and how they will support you in attracting great love. So I'm gonna run through six, it's a non-exhaustive list, but it's, it's a great like overview of some of the ways that we can access feminine energy and dial down that push energy, that strive energy, um, and dial up our, our receptivity and our softness. Um, and I'm also gonna share three key practices that uh, pertain to one of those doorways that will keep you in the flow of dating so you can show up radiant and magnetic to your dates and not lose your mind in between, right? <laughs> Who's down for that? Give me a holla <laughs> in the chat box. I'm down to keep my mind, yes, stay sane, all right? So give me a holla, a hell yes, if you are down for all of that. Cool, good, I got some people on board, awesome. Oh yes, of course, and gifts and prizes. I, um, towards the end of the call, I will be sharing an opportunity where you can get some private coaching with me uh, on the house. So, you know, just totally complimentary because it's gifting season. Right. Um, and you know, I love connecting with the women in my community. And if I can offer you a breakthrough in a 30 minute call, I will. 
<laughs> right? Easy as that. Um, and I will also be gifting the entire collection of the Let Him Find You Summit, which is the, um, the collection of trainings, inspirational conversations, and interviews that I just did. It's thir a collection of 30 audio and video recordings that I just completed, and it's all about um, accessing feminine energy and being being the, you know, being versus doing, right? Um, so I'll be gifting that to three lucky ladies. So stay on the line and um, you might be the winner. <laughs> okay, so um, one of the biggest complaints that I hear from my clients, the women that I work with, the women that I uh, serve in my community is that single available committed commitment-minded men are hard to come by. And just give me a, a hands up or a yes, I... I believe that too. If you feel like you, you've had that thought or that's your struggle. Okay. I have a bit of a tickle in my throat, so I'm going to be drinking a lot of water, tea and water. Kobe, what's up girl? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hello. And I got Mondi on the line and Phyllis and Kayla and everybody's agreeing. Yes, this is, this is a pain point. Single, Available, commitment-minded men are hard to come by. Okay, now I'm going to give you a truth bomb here because the truth is that single men are more available now, this day, in this moment, more than ever before. All right, more than ever before. According to the American Association for Single People, that is an actual an association that does research, according to the American Association for Single People, an unmarried majority has emerged in most major US cities as well as several states. And I don't have the statistics globally, but I do believe that that, that is an, a, a, an international trend, uh, at least in developed countries, okay? So this means that the majority of at least US households are headed by unmarried adults. And according to statisticbrain.com, right now listen to this, men make up 52.4% of online dating users. Now I know that not all of you are actively online dating, but this is just, just a slice of what's going on out there in the dating pool. 52.4% of online dating users are men, 47.6 are women. All right, so the odds are stacked against, uh, the, the odds are stacked in our, in our favor, in our favor, stacked for us. <laughs> uh, for you, really, I'm, I'm all set. Um, I will say it again, the problem is not a lack of single available quality men to date. In fact, they are more plentiful now than ever before. The issue is how we approach our dating life and the expectations we've placed on ourselves and the journey. Let me just quickly pop over. I think I've got some new people joining. I'm going to mute everybody. Mute everybody. Excellent. Great. Okay. So if you're just joining, single men are more plentiful and available to you now more than ever before, all right? Um, and the problem isn't the lack, it's the issue is our approach and our expectations. So that, that includes perception and our mindset, all right? So this training is gonna help you shift your mindset and that gravitational pull towards frustration and disappointment right? How many of you raise your hand in the chat window? Oh, I know frustration and disappointment. It's going to help you shift away from that gravitational pull. Uh-huh. Yep. I see this coming in. Awesome. And it's going to tune yourself to the frequency of femininity, right? Because femininity, the femi femininity is a frequency that we can cultivate in our life so that attracting love becomes a pleasurable process for you. How many of you out there, I'm speaking a foreign language. Wait, dating, pleasurable, what? <laughs> it absolutely can be. And the, the love that you attract, we want it to be in the highest alignment with your best self. So this training is going to help you with all of that. Okay. So why the heck do you need to pay attention to this? Why the heck do you need to pay attention to me? Well, I am, um, my name is Bex Burton. You guys know me, but I have totally been there, right? I, know exactly what it feels like to be looking around for my guy everywhere and just exhausting myself with that feeling of, are you him? Are you him? Are he, maybe you're my guy. Maybe you're my guy. Oh my God. Maybe he could be my guy. Whoa, sister, that is a whole lot of energy. And I've totally been there. And that just honestly, for me, that behavior just led to disappointment 
week after week, month after month, year after year. Okay. Um, I remember when I was a sing when I was single and I was generally feeling pretty good about my life, but then I remember very clearly laying awake at night, not being able to sleep and, and just missing my man. Like not, not even, like I said before, not even knowing who he was, but really like missing him. Um, and I remember the constant thoughts of, does he even exist? Is this even, ev even possible for me? Is this ever going to happen? And how those thoughts like had me looking harder and harder and more intense and engaged in that, that like pounce energy, <laughs> pounce energy. So the truth is like, it literally took me 20 years to crack the code on lasting love. And I will be completely honest with you. This is something that I study to this day. I continue my study about love and relationship and connection and, and intimacy and authenticity because it's not a once and done type of understanding, right? Just because you attract your person doesn't necessarily mean that like, great, I know it, I'm good. <laughs> All right, awesome. Those of you just joining, double check that you have muted yourself, please. I'm going to mute everybody once again, but that throws me off my eyes. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. We're good. Um, so my history, right, just briefly, is that I have run the gamut. I've stayed in relationships way too long because I didn't want to disappoint or hurt my partner. And by the time I got around to breaking it off, it was like such a catastrophe and a fucking dumpster fire that I felt like shit for like, weeks for months and was just got myself in this cycle of self-punishment and beat up and you know spiraling down this path of what the f is wrong with me all right how many of you can resonate with that drop a two in the chat box if you feel like you've been there before stayed in relationship for way too long and then by the time you're like oh it's a just a dumpster fire and you're just okay yeah, i see excellent Twos are flooding in the chat box. Thank you. Um, and personally, I've also swung in the op completely opposite direction of not dating anyone for long stretches of time because no one was good enough and nobody really met my expectations. And I'd spend hours and hours looking online, scrolling and scrolling and repeating, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> like, and just wasting my time just like having absolutely nothing to show for it at the end of it except for you know just this shitty feeling about how I wasted my time on a bunch of nopes so drop a four in the chat box if you resonate with that and it's just been like years since anybody has lived up to what you're looking for or okay the fours are flooding and <laughs> some of you guys who had twos also have fours so you feel me right it's a, it's I know the roller coaster it's real so my truth is that it wasn't until I slowed down, shifted my focus back on myself, my heart, my desires, my dreams, even my creativity, not just in love, like right in, in my life as a whole, did things really begin to shift. And I stopped pushing and chasing and began celebrating myself and receiving, right? How many of you, let's put a five in the box, if receiving is like, a foreign word for you <laughs> or like something that you're actively practicing and learning how to do good the fives are flooding in linda's got like a dozen fives up there awesome working on it great beautiful everybody um so what i didn't really what i didn't realize back then what i was doing was i was softening into my feminine energy and i was cultivating my feminine power Right. And this is just something that we have been, it's just been squeezed out of us. You know, we are celebrated and honored and, and, and uh, recognized and, and rewarded for our masculine energy when it comes to, you know, pretty much everything out there in the world, like accomplishment and, and, you know, career and, you know, finances and, uh, you know, getting our living situation and buying a house and adulting essentially is, you know, all very driven by masculine energy. And we are rewarded for that in this patriarchal society. But what really truly gives us our power is our feminine energy, our feminine grace, that soft, subtle, like, uh, and, I'll, and, and we'll all unpack all of that for you. But I'm just getting like, so fired up about this, because, you know, um, 
we can so easily be strong and masculine and independent, confident and achieving and goal oriented in all these other areas of our life. But then when it comes to relationship, uh, we, be, we, we just kind of lose it. We become this like puddle or this little girl or, you know, we just, we end up falling apart a little bit and it's totally cool because not everybody is born inherently with the skills and the knowledge of how to create lasting, loving soulmate relationships. I certainly didn't. I had to learn it. And that's why I'm here with you teaching it because it has been a radical shift in my life and continues to be so as I continue with my husband. I mean, we've been together. We're celebrating. Um, we're up at like six and a half years. Um, we'll be celebrating three years of being like officially legally married three years towards the end of next month. Um, but here's the thing, like these things that I'm talking about, the things that I'll unpack for you tonight, these are the key ingredients that really had me loosen up my white knuckle grip on finding my man and what made me radiant and magnetic to attract Nick into my life. And these are the elements that I'm going to share with you tonight. See, great love is something that just, it just doesn't show up on your doorstep, right? If it did, you'd already be there. <laughs> you'd already have it. It'd be great. Um, but great love is really a practice and not just a practice to attract it, but like even what I'm speaking into great love is a practice to keep it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Beth. Thanks. She said I was, we were a beautiful couple. Um, I like to think so. So, but like, you know, being in this practice is so, so powerful and important. And this is what I teach in the courses that I lead with the women that I work with is that your, your, your dating activity, it's a practice, it's a journey and cultivating and operating from feminine energy is the very essence of any practice, right? It's, it's our way of being mindful, being present. We'll talk about that. Um, focusing on the journey, the commitment and the follow through every day is the practice versus focusing each day on the, I'm not there yet. I haven't met my goal. You know, in other trainings um, in the past, I've talked about being goal oriented versus being process oriented. And that, you know, it can, you can literally break that down to masculine energy, feminine energy. So the feminine energy, you know, the process orientation, these are the elements that will keep you going. These are the ways of being that your man will be attracted to. So it works twofold. All right. So let's dive right in. Um, if you tuned into my recent summit, let him find you, which was amazing. I, there were so many of you that joined and we had amazing speakers, 30 incredible love authorities giving inspirational talks and conversations and trainings. And I will be giving away three complete packages to you at the very end of this call. So stay on the line. Um, there will be a quiz. <laughs> so the winners will be quizzed um, or there will be a quiz to determine the winners is what I mean. Um, but if you tuned in to let him find you, you got a lot of information and training around feminine energy. So I'm not going to go into too much of the, what it is, um, because I really want to focus on getting you there. I want to focus on getting you into feminine energy, but in short, you know, in, in the most simplest, simplest terms, okay. Masculine energy, we can think of being expressive, the doing, and we can think of feminine energy as receptive or the being. Okay. I know I don't have doing versus being on this slide here, but you can write that down in your notes. All right. Excuse me. And once again, if you joined late, you can scroll back in the chat window. I dropped a link to the downloadable follow along workbook. You should have gotten it in your email, but I also dropped it in the chat window just because technology, I want to make sure that you guys are covered. Um, and it's not an essential ingredient to get the most out of this call, but it does help you, you know, follow along. All right. So masculine, expressive, feminine, receptive. All right. And there are many ways of accessing our feminine energy. And like I said, at the top of the call, I'll fit as many into this training as possible. And these practices, again, coming back to this idea of practice, they take time to adopt and become second nature. Like this isn't like you flip a switch, you wake up one day and you're a master, you know, like fuck, we're human, right? Um, all, like all of life is a practice. Um, I love um, in the Let Him Find You Summit, it, 
for those of you who did tune in, Carol Allen was an amazing expert. And she, I think three or four times on our call, she just kept on saying, I just want everybody to slow down and take a deep breath. <laughs> I'm like, yes, uh, because it's true. These, these, practice, these things that I'm going to roll out tonight are practice. Um, and it takes time to adopt, become second nature. So be patient with yourself. Um, these are great opportunities to develop that inner dialogue of self-compassion versus self-punishment. Um, anybody out there, a uh, notorious self-punisher, just raise your hand, drop me a one in the chat box. Oh, I know that self-punishing voice. Oh, I know that pattern of beating myself up. Yeah, <laughs> the ones are flooding in. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna play with that a little bit tonight. So I want you to, let's just take a moment. We're not going to do this for each of the doorways, but we are going to start with six different doorways to accessing feminine energy. And as I've noted in the slides, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is um, a pretty comprehensive beginning anyway. So close your eyes for just a moment. Just take a deep breath. I want you to imagine that you're in a warm room with red walls and golden light. I want you to see in front of you a wooden door, the doorknob. This is the door of presence. And presence is the primary doorway to accessing feminine energy, and it's the one we'll be breaking down in detail tonight. And you can open your eyes. Here's my little picture of our doorway of presence. All right, but we're going to come back to the doorway of presence in a moment because we're going to dive a little bit deeper into depth about presence and accessing presence because only after we access presence, we can access these other doorways. Okay, so I want to give you the tools to get present and get out of that spin of inner punisher or that spin of is it ever going to happen for me, getting present. Okay, so we'll come back to that, but I want to cover all the doors first. All right, but the door of presence, like I said, it's, it's almost as if this doorway in this red room leads you into a hallway of all the other access points, all the other doorways to feminine energy. Okay, so we're going to take a quick peek down that hallway and see what those other doorways are, and then we'll come back to presence. Okay, everybody on board with that? You know where we're going? <laughs> okay. Awesome. So the next door, so we've gone through the doorway of presence, all right? We'll come back to this. But the next door is your doorway of emotion. And the doorway of emotion is a white wrought iron gate adorned with flowers. And in the picture here, I've got this beautiful ornate wrought iron gate with white flowers woven into it. It's beautiful. And the thing about emotion is it's such a powerful gift that we have as women. And again, it's only after we walk through the door of presence that we can be present with our emotions, that we can access our, our emotions. You know, after all, we are emotional creatures. It, it, like I said, it is one of our most powerful gifts as women is to be an emotional being. You know, we experience emotions in a way that men just don't, you know? Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why men desire women is because we help men access their emotional self. Our emotions, when we experience, when we identify, experience, and communicate our emotions, I'll talk about these as well, we give space and safety for men to experience theirs as well. Okay. So I'm not going to go into a lot of the how to's of these other doors, but I will come back to the doorway of presence and I'll give you some how to's around the doors. And just so you know, um, because this, <laughs> because this shit's so good. I am, um, I'm working up a, um, a series where I'm gonna I'm gonna go in depth through all of the doors. So that is coming up. I just had that um, that light bulb today. So um, think of this as a teaser, a little poo poo platter, a little taster of what that hallway has in store. But we'll come back to that. Okay. So we've got your doorway of emotion. Now let's keep walking down the hallway. 
And the next door, the next doorway, access point for your feminine energy is, um, I forgot I've got slides for all this stuff. <laughs> But your next doorway to feminine energy is your door to desire. Your desires. Your desires are such a powerful access point for your feminine energy. Your doorway for desire is a red tuft leather door with a frosted glass window. And if you are on the if you are joining uh, by computer, you can see the image that I have. I, I literally had to Google what, what that um, like quilted leather, what that was, that's Tuft, Tuft, T-U-F-T-E-D. I learned that creating this webinar. But this is your doorway to desire and desire is so powerful in, in gaining entry to our feminine energy. Because doorway, um, the desire doorway is, Desire is one of our ways of being, right? You can't do desire. Desire is a, is a way of being, being, it's a feeling, right? And on top of that, our desires come from our heart or our, our highest self or our, you know, our deep inside of us. Like our, our desires are not typically coming from a place of logic. Like, oh, I want a boyfriend. That sounds like a good idea. I mean, if that's your driver, then we might reconsider your <laughs> motivations. But you know, like desire comes from a deeper place, right? I think we can all agree on that. Now, here's where, here's where, you know, I'm going to go get spiritual on you because I really believe that our desires are like seeds that are planted by the divine, by God, the universe, even our highest self right? Our best self is connected to that, that divinity. And that's where I believe our desires come from. So I believe that um, being connected with our desire is like being connected with God energy, with like being connected with our best self, our highest self, and therefore our feminine energy. Like I, you know, it's, uh, I was going to go off on a really, really big tangent about, um, fungi, fungus, fungi, mushrooms, and like the origins of um, humans as animals, but I'm not, I'm not, I'll say that, I'll say that for a Facebook live stream. Um, but accessing our, our, our desire again is our, uh, you know, being connected with the divine, being connected with our highest self, and that is connection to our feminine energy. All right. So again, moving down that hallway, the next doorway in that hallway is the doorway to your senses, all right? The senses doorway. This doorway is glowing, lit up in all the colors of the rainbow and covered in fur. And boy, do you know that that was a really hard door to find. So <laughs> the door that uh, is displayed here is bright beaming rainbow color and all lit up. And this is the, this is the senses our powerful doorway to your feminine energy. Um, so be, consider for a moment your five senses, right? The senses that we're aware of, sight, hearing, taste, touch, smell. Um, I like to throw movement in there too, because um, for me, movement is uh, just such an inherent part of our, our, um, our being. And, you know, if, if for those of you who may know me, my history was a movement teacher, dance teaching, Pilates personal training. My company was called Sense of Motion. I believed it to be the seventh sense if the sixth sense was our, our knowing, our knowledge of like outside of the body, our five senses inside the body, and our seventh sense being the awareness of being embodied. Um, but it, so I, I include movement there. But all of these, these five, these six senses, give us, grant us instant access to our feminine energy because they, they, they bring us into presence. They bring us right into the present moment. Like if you're, if you've got a savory steak or, oh gosh, I was at, um, was at a really amazing Japanese restaurant, uh, over the Thanksgiving holiday. And I had the most delicious, like miso pork vegetable stew. And it was an umami party in my mouth. And, and like, 
you know, anytime we're savoring a delicious meal or we're smelling like the, the intoxicating scent of roses, or it brings us right into the present moment. And anytime we're present, we're in our feminine energy. Um, let's see. Right. Okay. And, and the other thing that I have noted here is that our senses are, you know, are rooted in receptivity. Everything that when we're engaging in our senses, we're, we're receiving information, right? We're seeing things, we're smelling things, we're hearing things, even, even the movement sense, right. Of being embodied we're we're, um, we're receiving the, the, the body, the wisdom and the, the intelligence, the body of, of the body, excuse me. <sighs> okay. Um, getting ahead of myself, but so, and again, just kind of coming back to that idea of being receptive is the foundation of being in your feminine energy. So we've got the, the doorway of your senses. Now our coming down the hallway, still in that hallway, ladies, the next doorway that we've got is this cute little hobbit, hobbit hole door. And this doorway to feminine energy is your inner child. And this is a circular hobbit door painted in bright colors. It's, it's playful. It's joyous. It's lighthearted. Um, you know, but in, in terms of your inner child, you know, we often talk about the inner child is the wounded. This is where our limiting beliefs come from. This is where our core wound stories come from, right? You know, those stories, I don't matter. I'm not enough. I'm not lovable. I'm doing it wrong. Um, and then all of those variations, how many of you have a core wound story that you're aware of? We all have them. That's the thing. But like, how many of you have done the work to like identify like, oh, all my shit boils down to this one thing. Yep. I'm not enough is coming through. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not enough. So mine are, and I'll be totally transparent with you. I'm not enough. I don't matter. And I'm doing it wrong. Those are my top three. Most of my shit in life, most of my limiting beliefs, most of my fears boil down to those things. So yes, must please all. Yeah, people pleasing. That's that's definitely a pattern. That's a, a way of being for sure. Yes, Neha says, I have worked. <laughs> Phyllis says, not enough. Yep, Amanda says, done a ton here. Yeah, so you know, in the work that I do, um, I call these, I call these conversations, your Beckys, because I was, before I was Bex, I was Becky, little Becky. And that's when these, these conversations are developed is when we're kids, when we're little. So I call mine, my collection of stories, my Beckys. And the thing about them is that they're with us for life. And the, you know, and I, I know I'm going to get some shit for saying that they're with us for life. You can't heal from them, but it's, it's not that you can't heal from them, right? You just can't get rid of them. They're just traveling along with you for, for all of your days. And the best that we can do is really have a relationship with them and love them and like just, and hold them as we would have loved to be held that way when we were that child forming that story. So yes, your relationship to them changes. Yes. Inner child healing is so important. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So that's one aspect of your inner child, but then there's this other totally like untapped aspect of inner child that we don't often speak into, which are your helpful aspects of the inner child. And again, going back to the Let Him Find You Summit, if you tuned into Antia and Brody Boyd, we talked about this a little bit. I actually had this aha moment where I was like, oh my God, your inner child is like your, your best friend when it comes to feminine energy because she displays like the, the very essence of feminine energy, the, the, where are my notes? The, the, the playfulness, the joyousness, the carefree feeling, gleeful, inquisitive, unassuming, open, non-judgmental. I mean, how many of us move through our life like that on a daily basis? Maybe like 10, 20% of the time, maybe if we're lucky 40 or 50% of the time, but you know, you get a text message from somebody and you're like, I ain't doing that judgment or like bullshit critical, <laughs> like whatever, you know, like we we're human. We have these reactions, but inner child is when we can be in that inner child energy, that skillful inner child energy, 
on our dates and our dating life with men, like it, it evokes in them this desire to be with us because, um, here, what am I saying in my notes here? It's, it's, uh, yeah, we all have heavy shit on our plate. And when, you know, and when we're together in partnership, you know, men look to lighten, men look to women to lighten their emotional labor load. Men find peace in their women, you know, and not that we women don't have heavy shit on our plate too. And in partnership, we deal with that together, right? But when we're coming to the table and we're, we're, we're wanting to form deep connection, you know, and I'm not saying that you can't like share your shit to create deep connection. However, when you're, when you're, you know, in your dating practice, you are magnetic when you can conjure that inner child skillful energy. So, um, great. Yes. Excellent. Love the comments coming through the chat window. Thank you. Keep them coming. Um, so I want you to take a second here and I want you to think like, and maybe even journal this in your, in your notebook, but take a moment and ask yourself, what connects me with my fun? What connects me with my joy? What makes me feel carefree? Is there anything? Um, so here on the screen, I'm pulling up a, um, a video that I shot. Uh, this is six years ago, six and a half years ago now. And this was the day that I met Nick. We had met online before that. We had a little bit of exchange, but this video, let me get rid of that ad. This video, um, this was me getting into my inner child. Because honestly, and some of you may have heard this story, but um, the day that I had my first date with Nick, um, I was giving my friend a massage. I was also doing Thai massage at the time. And, and uh, we're finishing up and she was saying to me, she's like, oh, what are you doing tonight? What's, what are your plans for the weekend? And I was like, oh, I've got a first date. And she was like, oh, could you be more excited about it? And I was like, oh, I just don't want to, I just want to go home and watch Netflix and fuck off. Right. How many of you have been there? <laughs> right? Oh, I don't want to, let's just stay home. I know I'm going to have a good time with my, with my, uh, binge watching or my, my, uh, delicious home cooking or like whatever it is that keeps us at home and like not going out. Excellent. Yes. Beautiful. So this is me getting into my inner child. I knew that I had to adjust my attitude. I knew that I had to tweak my, my outlook, my perception. And again, this, again, coming back to the very top of our call, when I said the problem is the issue is not the lack of single available men. The, the issue is our, our approach and our expectations, right? So my, um, so that day, um, I, I was a hula hoop artist at the time. That was my joy. That was my bliss. So I went out and I, I did some dancing. I probably, this is probably like a two minute slice of like two hours out in that, uh, Brooklyn driveway, just hula hooping my face off and got myself into this great place. Just found some grounded energy, found some playfulness, found some joy and went out on this date. Didn't have time to shower. I like just showed up sweaty and whatever. And he was my guy. <laughs> so I know that bringing myself into that child, like that, that inner child energy was very powerful in getting me into the right mindset. So awesome. Love these comments that are coming through the chat window. I've got bicycles and art, photography, being with friends, music, painting, dancing, beautiful, everybody. This is awesome. So it's so important for us to know where our joy comes from, where our, um, where our playfulness comes from, where, where fun can be sourced. So, um, the, the next doorway that we are going through on this hallway. Oh God, this is such a beautiful doorway. This doorway has an elaborate gilded arch over it with a fancy knocker and a grand stairway stairway to the entry. This is the mother of all doorways to feminine energy. This is the mother of all doorways to feminine energy. I'm going to say it one more time. This is the mother of all doorways to feminine energy. And that is vulnerable self-expression. Vulnerable self-expression 
is the mother of all doorways. Did I say it enough? But here's the thing. It, it like literally this doorway in particular deserves its, in, its own training, its own series of trainings in and of itself. So I'll, I'll do my best tonight. But then, like I said before, I opened Pandora's box creating this webinar. So this is going to be a series of trainings and you'll get more of this information. Um, but let's take a peek through this doorway. Okay. So vulnerable self-expression, when we practice presence, okay, coming back to presence, our, we have the ability to practice emotional intelligence, emotional, uh, intelligence, emotional awareness, we're able to like really assess what we're feeling and experience it. We practice presence, then we practice emotional intelligence, and then we practice the, the identification of our desires, really like getting real and solid with what we want in life and love. The next, then the, the expansion of that, that, that next step is the expression of these things, right? And the expression of sharing your emotions and your desires has the ability to build deep connection. Okay. So it's important that we're able to express ourselves vulner vulnerably. You know, so many of us are subconsciously driven by our inner dialogue, right? That one that we talked about and our deep core wounds, right? The stories, I'm not enough. I, I don't matter. I'm wrong. I have to please people. I can't disappoint anybody. We're so driven by those things on a subconscious level that we're, we move through life protecting ourselves. We have difficulty being open and honest with others about our feelings, our needs, and desires uh, for fear of being rejected, being abandoned, or engulfment, which is the loss of yourself, like being like just completely losing yourself. So many reasons. There are more too. So how many of us, how many of you resonate, just drop in the chat and, and this is a practice in being vulnerable. How many of you resonate with the fear of abandonment, the fear of rejection, the fear of engulfment? That's mine. Like I am so, that's a big fear of mine is like just losing myself in, in, in a relationship. Good. Yes. I see them coming through. This is beautiful. Engulfment, rejection. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe multiple, multiple fears, all of the above. Yes. So our true power, again, coming back to the mother of all doorways, our true power is in our vulnerability. When we can express to others what we need, what we want, when we can express to others what we feel and what we fear, we evoke in men, especially their masculine and their biological driver to be there for us and supply us with what we need. You know, again, this is deserving of its own training. <laughs> so we're going to put a pin in this one, but vulnerability, like I said, you know, in this last point here that I have on the slide, vulnerability evokes the masculine in men. It, um, you know, it offers them space. It, it gives them, um, what do I mean by that? It, it gives them uh, a, a, an idea of where they fit into our life. Okay. So again, we'll put a pin in that. We'll come back to that on another training. Um, Cause those are the six doorways. These are six big doorways. Now each and every one of those doorways, ladies has a lot to it, like I said. So um, be on the lookout and I will let you know um, when I do the series that's going to be each doorway. That'll probably be coming up in uh, December, Jan probably January, because we're already in December. How did that happen? <laughs> All right. So let's jump back now. Let's come out of the hallway and come back to that first doorway of presence. And presence, again, is the primary doorway of feminine energy, the, the, the access point, how we get in, how we start feeling feminine energy. And tonight I'm going to give you three specific tools that you can put into practice to practice presence. So the first um, involves your breath. Breath is one of many, but a very foundational way to get present. 
All right, and the practice that I have for you tonight is called the reset practice. We started the call with this tonight, and we'll go there now. So I want you to place a hand over your heart and close your eyes again. For some of you, this is a repeat, but now we're actually doing it as part of an exercise, so join me. Eyes are closed, hand is over your heart. Now, the practice is three deep breaths, but the setup, we've got our hand over our heart. Maybe you can feel your heartbeat. If nothing else, you can feel the warmth of your skin or the warmth of your body through your clothing. And just take a moment and connect with the fact that you are a living, breathing, organic human being animal. You breathe breath. We don't, you know, some might argue that we don't even breathe our own breath, but life breathes into us. Life breathes us. We can consciously breathe, but we can also unconsciously breathe. What's breathing us? There's a fourth force that's breathing us. And the thing about breath is that we can't breathe in the future and we can't breathe in the past. Our breath brings us back to the present moment instantly. So wherever you've been today, whatever happened last night, last year, what's happening tomorrow, whomever you've spoken with today, near or far, all fades away when we breathe. So we're gonna take three deep breaths. And the mantra that I borrow from a woman named Megan Watterson, she says, call yourself back from all people, all places, all times. So we're going to take three deep breaths, calling ourselves back from all people, places, and times. And I'll breathe with you. Take a deep breath in. And an exhale out. Another breath in. Another breath out. And one last breath. And your exhale out. Now from that place, stay there. Stay there. Hand over your heart. Eyes closed. Now conjure what you want. Conjure what's in your vision, conjure your desire with the relationship, the partner, the qualities. Beautiful. And then opening your eyes and taking your pen in your hand, I want you to write a quick I'm so happy and grateful, now that statement. What does that mean? That means on your piece of paper, you're going to write, I'm so happy and grateful, now that. And then you're going to complete the statement with a present tense something that reflects that desire that you just conjured, as if it has already occurred, as if it has already unfolded. I'm so happy and grateful now that I have attracted a partner that is aligned with my highest self that feels like my person. Whatever it is, write that statement down. I'm so happy and grateful now that either I have or I am. I am in the relationship of my dreams. Okay. And then for anybody, if you want to share in the chat window, I'd love to hear some of those I am statements. I'm so happy and grateful now that. Okay. And if you're still working on those, that's fine too. I'm actually going to give you 30 seconds. And I'm just going to jump out here for just a moment. I'll be right back. But... I want to offer you 30 more seconds to write that I'm so happy and grateful now that statement. And I'm going to have a very honest moment with you. I'm feeling a little under the weather. 
I've been drinking like gallons and gallons of water. So I'm going to use the restroom very quickly and I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. It's very vulnerable, <laughs> but I'll be right back. You all are so lovely. You are a very forgiving audience and I appreciate your um, accepting of my humanity. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, I love this. I love, oh, you guys have just flooded this chat window. It's so beautiful. I am so happy and grateful now that I have my soulmate in life. I'm so happy and grateful someone holds me and loves me, loves and loves me with them in my heart. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm so connected to myself and to him. I'm so happy and grateful now that I've attracted a partner that has essential, that has sensual passions, a loving heart and a protective nature. Yes. I'm so happy and grateful that I realize how important dance is to me. It gives me peace, joy, and love. Beautiful. I love the, I love the, the variation. I love the, the spectrum of these statements. This is excellent. So the reason why I'm giving you this reset practice in the first place, all right, let's just back up to that is because we spin, right? And I talked about this a moment ago. We spin with this, this it's that gravitational pull to worry, doubt, fear, concern. Like, is it ever gonna happen? Is it, is it, is it happening for me? And the way that we can reset is always with breath. Because the thing about the spin is that we're getting either ahead of ourselves or we're getting trapped in the past. We're not being present. And in that present moment is when you can create, when you can create a new story, create new possibility. But we can't do that when we're stuck in the past or hung up on the future, right? We can only do that in the present moment. So your reset breath is your opportunity to catch yourself when you're in the spin and say, whoa there, I know I can do better. Heart, eyes three breaths, and then conjure what you want. Conjure what is actually in alignment with your vision versus all the bullshit, all the noise that doesn't, it doesn't matter either anymore or isn't even real yet. You know, you'll, those of you who have followed me for a while and my clients will hear me say this all the time, your history does not dictate your destiny. So getting hung up on the past, you know, it's, it's like, yes, we can learn, we have our lessons, what we carry with us, but it doesn't mean that that's going to continue happening over and over again. And when we're spinning out about what could happen or what if, or is it ever gonna, then we're making shit up that doesn't exist. And we're putting our energy into that, right? I mean, how many of you say in the, in the, uh, the chat window, drop me a one in the chat window, if you've ever heard the statement, Worry is praying for what you don't want to happen. Yeah, one, 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 one. Excellent, beautiful. So this reset breath is, it's your, um, it's your pattern interrupt, essentially. And, and again, the only way that you can interrupt the pattern is through awareness, through that presence. Because if we're not, you know, we can, we can so easily be hijacked by that spin. But when we, when we have presence, we can give ourselves that reset breath, and we can come back to the present moment and then open that space, open that window of what would I love? Conjure what's in alignment with what you desire versus everything else is bullshit. Everything else is noise. Okay. And I say that with so much love. You guys know me. Um, okay. So that's practice. Number one is your reset breath. All right. Now we've got, um, your, uh, awareness. Okay. So I, I just mentioned awareness, but I'll mention it again. Excuse me. I'm going to take a little, a little yogi tea to coat my throat. Um, awareness, the second practice is 
a meditation practice. All right. Now, oh, I'm like, before you hang up, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I know a lot of, I know I've got a lot of avid meditators, people with meditation practice on the line. Um, and, and it's funny because I, for a very long time in my life was like, I can't sit still long enough to meditate. Medi me me me. And it, it hasn't been until like my late thirties that, um, I actually get it. <laughs> I get why meditation is so great and powerful. Um, but it's, it's, you know, again, this powerful entry to feminine energy, awareness, what we do when we're present. So once you get present, then we get aware. And that's how we can access emotion. That's how we can access desire. That's how we can like access all these feminine energies, right? Or these, this, the, the, the doorways to feminine energy. But the meditation practice, I mean, this is a mindful meditation practice. The how to's are not revolutionary. You can Google them. It, it's, you know, it's very, very widely accessible knowledge, but, you know, typically comfortable seated position, eyes closed, focusing on your breath. I literally like to focus on the, the sensation of air passing through my nostrils because that gives me even more focus. Um, and then the next step is just to notice what you're noticing because we're human and we're monkeys and your brain is going to go boo -boo, like crazy town because it's like this finally this moment to sit and be still and then your brain goes oh is that my opportunity to spin <laughs> and we're like no 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 and so here's the, and that's the dance of meditation right is like what comes up oh that's interesting come back to the breath release you know and one of the ways that I like to describe this to um, my, the clients that I work with and anybody who's interested in meditation practices, you imagine that you're on the side of a highway, a freeway, and you're watching the traffic go by, just watching the traffic go by, watching the traffic go by. And this is similar to when you're sitting in meditation and you're focusing on your breath. Now, what often every time for all of us in meditation practice, your thoughts bubble up. Now, the thing is, the, the, the key with mindfulness meditation is what we do with that thought, right? And to stay in meditation is we notice what we're noticing. We might make an acknowledgement of it. We might say, oh, that's interesting. And then brush it away or let it go, let it pass, take a breath, reset. But then there are times when we get hijacked by that thought. <laughs> and I know you know what I'm talking about. But coming back to that traffic analogy, it's, as, it's almost as if when we get hijacked by a thought, we actually get into one of those cars that we're watching pass by. We get into one of those cars and we just take off on the freeway and now we're in the traffic. And that's sort of like what it feels like I, and when I'm sitting in meditation, when I actually get hijacked by a thought or when I let the thought carry me instead of simply noticing what I'm noticing and then releasing it, coming back to my breath, coming back to the stillness, coming back to the present moment coming back to the quiet until the next thought comes up and I get in that car and then I go off on the highway and I say, Oh wait, no, actually I'm going to get out of this car and I'm going to come back to the side of the highway and I'm going to watch the cars pass by. All right. Let me know, drop a, a, a three in the chat box. If you feel like this, this traffic analogy is kind of helpful. Um, yes, yes, yes. Great. Excellent. Um, now, here's the thing about meditation. This is one of the reasons why I'm giving this as a practice because, I mean, how many of, we've, we've heard this. We've heard this. This is not new information. What might be new information is the why, the why. I mean, there's so many benefits of mindfulness meditation, but one of them that is so key and crucial to our feminine energy and our ways of being that is attractive and magnetic to love, relationship, partnership is that practicing meditation is training against reaction. It actually helps us slow down the time of those knee jerk reactions that we have to our triggers, right? When somebody says something locked up to us or totally benign, it kind of doesn't matter because what really matters is our filter, right? Those wounds, those stories. And we hear it in a way that like, touches a nerve, ah, you know, like <laughs> how many of you have that, that inner crazy bitch that, that does that flip the table and, ah, you know, like she's in all of us, right? However, 
and, 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 and the reason why I'm bringing that up is because that can very easily be a huge separator when we're getting to know people, when we're like, how many, how many of you have been like in a, an email or a text exchange with a guy and he's not really showing up. He's not giving you what you want. And then all of a sudden you don't even know what's happening, but you are texting him the most vile, angry, you should know better. I deserve better than this kind of text message. Send, holy shit, what just happened? <laughs> Right? Put a four in the box if you've ever been there. <laughs> I think Matt, Matt Boggs calls that like an, uh, what does he call that? He's got a great name for it, but it's like sort of like this emotional dump, right? Um, but the reason why I'm bringing that up is because a mindfulness meditation practice will help you slow down that reaction and like give you just a, a little bit more of a window of opportunity to make different choices, meaning to breathe, to consider my words, to consider that yelling and screaming or sending that angry text in this moment may not actually be the, the best move for me to do right now. Maybe if I just took a moment to breathe, <laughs> take that deep breath, all right? But meditate, it's, it's amazing how, um, you know, and again, coming back to this idea that it's not a once and done, but over time, cumulatively, when you when you work a meditation practice, it absolutely has that effect where it, it, it just slows your reaction time down. It gives you more power over your decisions. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> about, like, <laughs> about sending those texts. Those texts. It's true. All right. Um, so let's see. Um, my, my thought for you, start with two minutes and practice the practice of noticing what you're noticing, recognizing the thoughts that come up and then letting them go by and then build it up to 10 minutes. I'm at, I'm at 10 minutes. I don't really meditate more than 10 minutes a day unless it's, you know, maybe a weekend. I might do two sets of 10 minutes. Um, if I'm feeling indulgent, I'll set a timer for 15 minutes. And honestly, like it's gotten to a point where it's, it's become my little like vacation to Mexico. It is, it's like, you know, we're so busy. We've got so much going on, so much stimulation, so much sensory input, which contributes to that, that reactionary side of us. Think of it as your 10 minute vacation. Okay. <laughs> I, I swear it. Yes. Over time, it, it has huge influence. Okay. Third practice I'm going to share with you tonight is your acceptance. All right, and this is another practice that gets us into our feminine energy. Again, it's a practice in presence. And this is shifting our perception to flow, to what is. And being in the spirit of what is, is highly feminine. It's highly um, feminine energy. Because the opposite is control, manipulation, denial, push, strive. So you feel that, that, that dichotomy, right? So being in a surrender practice or a flow practice, or let's just call it an acceptance practice is where we are able to shift away from fear, doubt, worry, concern, and into flow. Cause if you think about those, those emotions, those feelings of worry, doubt, fear, concern, Right again, we're kind of tapping into those areas of either the past or the future, the things that don't no longer matter. They're, they're not. They're not real. They're, they don't exist. The future doesn't exist. The past, irrelevant. I say that with love. I know we've all walked our path, and some of you have walked through fires bigger than I can even imagine. At the same time, your history does not dictate your future. So just hear me with love. You know, I'm, I'm in no way trying to negate or belittle any of your experiences because we all have walked our path. Um, at the same time, you know, wishing things were different or pushing for a different outcome, you know, is uh, fighting against your feminine energy. It is, you know, it's coming back into that masculine. And, and when we're in relationship or when we're dating, that doesn't go over well. You know, we can, we can, we can lead the man to water, but we can't make him drink. Right. And so, um, 
again, kind of coming back to the let him find you summit off the top of my head. Sharzad had a really great interview about um, communicating with feminine energy and how we can evoke action in men just simply by, by communicating effectively and not being demasculating or not being like manipulative or uh, what's the word? Um, micromanaging that happens a lot. So accepting what is, is the opposite of push. It's, it's the, the allowing. And some of the, the questions that I play with in my own practice and with the work that I do with my women is what if everything is okay? You know, like, especially when we're in that spin of fear, doubt, worry, concern, you take that reset breath, that three deep breath, conjure, what would I love? All right, so now I'm, now I'm coupling these practices together, but this practice, what if everything is okay? What if everything is actually unfolding as it should be? What if everything is perfect and divine? What if everything is happening for me? You know, you can kind of start to feel the pressure being released and you can kind of just start to feel like, the, your perception might shift around here. You might be like, oh, well, I, you know, um, I've got this client who is going through a huge life change. She's sold her apartment. She's in a career transition. Um, another client is moving across the country and looking for her man in a new place. And uh, there's so much stuff that is coming up for them. And it's like, why is this happening now? What the fuck? You know? <laughs> and it's like, okay, yes the universe can absolutely have like a really twisted sense of humor and how is it happening for you? How is it unfolding in your favor? How is it in some way maybe revealed to us in the future, leading us to our beloved through a windy path that we're not able to see. Right. Um, so accepting what is surrender flow. Now, um, this is, this is one flow practice, um, but there are so many ways of accessing flow. And, you know, and just asking yourself these questions is one way. But like that hula hoop video that I showed you before, that is also a flow practice. That's something that, um, you know, I used to get into to get into my dancing. Or, you know, for those of you who are creative, maybe it's, you know, painting or listening to music or creating music. Some people, for some people, it's golf or running or, you know, I get into flow when I run too. But that's that sense of like releasing like conscious thought and being with the divine, being in that present moment. So surrender, acceptance, flow, the accepting of what is. Huge practice in being in your feminine energy. All right. Okay, um, we're rocking and rolling. Let me check the chat real quick because I got a couple of people jumping in. Beautiful. I've totally made my feet go numb now. I've got pins and needles in my feet. Um, great chats. I love it. Uh, oh, some people are dropping off. I get it. No problem. But if you stay on the line, you'll be eligible to win prizes and gifts. Okay, excellent. So let's make a quick moment to recap because we're at that time. I don't want to keep you all night. I'm so, so grateful for your gracious attention. Um, and again, once again, just a moment, I'll be gifting and prizing and we'll be giving you an opportunity to get a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me as well as three opportunities to win the entire Let Him Find You Summit, which is a collection of 30 interviews, inspirational conversations, and um, trainings. I mean, they run the gamut. Okay. So, um, our six doorways to feminine energy, where you remember those doors, we've got the, the, the foundational doorway of presence. We have the, once we walk through that doorway, then we've got the hallway and we've got emotion. We've got desire. We've got your senses. We've got inner child. We've got vulnerable self-expression, right? These are all ways of being that you can tap into to get access to your feminine energy and be more than do. Okay. And then we have the three practices that uh, pertain to presence, particularly each of the, each of these doorways has a number of different practices, but the presence doorway, these are just three of so many. Um, but we've got the breath reset practice, the mindful mindfulness meditation practice, and the 
accepting of what is practice. Cool. All right. Um, let's see. What else have we got? Being in your feminine energy is doubly powerful in your love attraction journey. It will keep you grounded. It will keep you connected with yourself and committed along the twisty path of your towards your beloved. So it's it, it, it supports you in staying sane in your dating practice. And it is the very essence of you at the heart of your being that your man will see and fall in love with. Not what you do for a living, not what you drive or who you hang out with, but who you be and like who you be in your authentic, like feminine radiance. That's who he falls in love with. All right. So let's gift and prize gifts and prizes. Um, all right. I've got to find this link. Give me just a quick second. Oh, well, how about this? I'm sending it to you in an email, <laughs> but I'm gifting you a, an opportunity because this training is just the tip of the iceberg. And I, absolutely know that you got on this call because you're hitting a wall in your love life and you are hungry for the next step and you are done with being stuck and you're ready to move into move whatever mountain that stands in the way of you and your beloved your amazing relationship that you're calling in that strong secure partner who's got his life and his emotions in the right direction and his love pointed squarely at you here's the thing i have got you girl I know what it takes to shift inside and be the woman he wants. I, I get it. Like I've totally been there. I've made these shifts myself and I know that it doesn't have to be this hard and you don't have to do this alone with an outside perspective and a trained heart. Hello. I can support you towards a breakthrough, huge breakthrough. Um, I can help you see what lies in your shadow. The thing that's holding you back that you may not even be aware of. And I want to support you in tearing down the blocks that have kept you from the lasting soulmate love you truly desire. So what I've done is I've opened up my calendar for 15 of the hungriest women to speak with me directly and get that breakthrough that you're looking for. And I am going to take a second in a moment. Actually, you know what? Here, let me do it now. Hi, I'm going to look for this link. They were dropping in the, that's the workbook. I did have all this queued up, but I had to, to close that window. <laughs> but I've got a link that's um, to an application that you can fill out. Here, I'll drop it in the chat window now. Boop. Bam. All right, so you can click on that link. You can fill out an application and uh, for a complimentary love attraction strategy call with me. And what's cool about this call is it is specifically designed to support you in seeing exactly what's blocking you in love and will give you a breakthrough. I will give you a breakthrough, hopefully, in, in some form, either a tool, a strategy, a, a mindset hack, or a next step, some kind of resource that's going to move you from where you are now to where you want to be in your love life, in your dating practice. All right. So click on that link. Beth is saying, where's the link? says you need permission. All right, let me go fix that. I'll fix that as soon as we get off the call. I don't want to hold you guys while I fix the technology, but um, is anybody else see seeing that you need permission to access the link? Yep, okay, great. Thanks for letting me know. I'll fix that. Oh, because it's that's not the right link. You guys, ugh. All right, let's just give away these prizes. <laughs> I will make sure you have the link in your email. I'll make sure that the link is queued up here in the chat before we drop off the line. But here's the deal. Fill out the application. Somebody from my team will get in touch with you within 24 hours. And if you're a great fit for this call, then you'll get a booking link to get on my calendar. Um, the reason why I'm doing an application is because I want to make sure that I am serving the people who are hungriest and most open and receptive to making the shifts and changes necessary to call in great love. Like so many of us say, I want great love, but we're, you know, I'm ready for great love, but we're actually like there. So, you know, and I'm not, you know, not saying you're not there. I'm not saying anything about <laughs> what I'm saying is that the application is there so that I can determine 
who is most open and receptive to receiving the coaching and getting the shifts and changes necessary to call in great love, you know? Um, so you will hear from somebody on my team within 24 hours filling out that application. Um, you know, the, the one thing that I do have to say is that my life is completely different from where it was like six, seven years ago before Nick entered my life. And it's because of the coaches that I work with and because of the man who's by my side that I call my husband. Like I wouldn't have this life if I didn't have the people in my life, if I didn't have my coaches, if I didn't have my husband, you know, and I know how powerful partnership can be. And I see that for each and every one of you. And I would love to support you in, in getting you there. I would love to be part of your journey. So I will make sure that you get that link. Um, I want to give away some prizes. I want to give you away three complete collections of the Let Him Find You Summit. So to the first person who answers in the chat window, so get your, get your typing fingers ready. To the first person who answers correctly in the chat window, what is the foundational doorway that I talked about? The foundational doorway to feminine energy. Boom. Oh, <laughs> you guys are amazing. Awesome. I think it's Kimberly. Is that Kimberly with an L E girlfriend? Shoot me an email. Bex at BexBurtonCoaching.com. I will shoot you an email with an all access pass to the let him find you summit. Um, here I'm pulling up this link for the application because that is super important. So guys, before I ask the next question for the quiz, for the quiz, <laughs> for the contest, for the prizes, just click on that link and make sure that your, uh, your application pulls up properly. Let, let me know if not, and I'll figure it out. Great. Tammy says yes. Sarah says yes. Sarah says yay. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so you got two people. There's your link to get your application. All right. I will probably post it a couple more times because I'm going to give away two more complete all access passes to the Let Him Find You Summit. Okay. So to the first person who answers correctly in the chat window, you crack your knuckles, get your typing fingers ready, drum roll, brrr, name one of the tools mentioned in the training to access presence. Boom. I got Sarah C. I think, whoa, the feed is moving so fast. Fast. Um, yes, Sarah Kor Korenswit says meditation. That was absolutely one of the tools. That was the second tool. Sarah C, please shoot me an email at Bex at BexBurtonCoaching.com, and I will shoot you an all-access pass to the Let Him Find You Summit, which is complete. It's in the vault. The access is no longer there, but you have it. You have it now. You have the power. All right. Third and final question. You guys ready? Shake up your hands. Get your typing fingers ready. Those of you who are on the phone, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> all right. Great. Last question. The last prize to the first person who answers correctly in the chat window. What is the gilded mother of all access doorways to feminine energy? <laughs> ah, right there with it. Vulnerable self-expression. Not just vulnerability, but vulnerable self-expression. She had it all complete, massive. Niha, do me a favor, shoot me an email at bex at bexburtoncoaching.com and I will shoot you an all-access pass to the Lit and Find You Summit. Ladies, it has been a pleasure. It has been a joy. You are all so bright, beautiful, amazing, wonderful, radiant spirits. And um, here, let me drop the link in the chat window one more time. You'll also get it in your email, but this is the link to apply for a one-on-one -on -one private strategy call with me. We'll get to the bottom of what's going on in your love life, what's not going on in your love life, and we'll figure out what's getting in the way, and I will give you a tool, a resource, a, a, a next step to move you out of stuck and towards your soulmate because it is your birthright. It is so out there and available for you. True love absolutely exists. It is plentiful. It is abundant. It's everywhere. People you know have it. I know you do. I know people you know have it and it's absolutely available to you. So let me just check the chat window. Thank you. Thank you. I receive. You have a nice evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you guys are so beautiful.
big hearts, big love. Um, mark your calendars if you're still on the line. Geez, thanks for hanging out with me. Mark your calendars for Wednesday, the 20th of December. I'm doing a, a, a special that I been doing the last couple of years and now it's just kind of a thing where I do a solstice call. So I'll be doing more gifts and prizes on that call as well. Um, and it'll be a similar zoom call and hopefully it'll be a little bit more interactive. I just ended up with so much information that I wanted to give you guys tonight, but, um, I love you so much. December 20th solstice call moving into the night, the darkest night of the year. And uh, you guys are great. Okay. I won't keep you any longer. You are amazing. I love you so much. And I hope to connect with you. I'll be reading those applications tonight, tomorrow. You'll hear from somebody on my team about next steps within 24 hours. So thank you all so much. I love you. Bye.